Okay, so we're still talking cricket on the Sportsmax Zone. The West Indies team will start their tour of Australia later this evening, Caribbean time, with their three-day tour match against the Cricket Australia 11, led by Peter Hanscom. The squad includes seven uncapped players, some of whom are expected to make their debuts in the first test. Let's have a quick look at this squad. Craig Braffitt, Captain Azor, Azar Joseph is the vice captain. Tejan Ryan Chanapol, Kurt McKenzie, Alec Athanes, Kevin Hodge, Justin Graves, Joshua De Silva. Akeem Jordan, Gurakesh Moti, Kimar Roach, Kevin Sinclair, Tevin Imlak, Shamar Joseph, and Zachary McCaskey. Coach Andre Coley is confident in his team's ability to compete, even with the new players. Well, they're not, they're not strangers. I mean, they would have played against each other you know, in regional cricket. Um, recently, we, we toured uh, South Africa. Some of the players are here. Uh, and, and, and the camaraderie has been, been very good and um, actually been very impressed in terms of the, the feedback and, and, uh, and some of the nurturing from the senior players, you know, watching them take leadership. I mean, Alzari, um, Kimar has been, has been very good, or have been very good in terms of how they engage younger players and giving insights around their um, experiences. So that's been good to watch as well, outside of the obvious leadership of, uh, of myself and, and Craig. Uh, Andre Coley there, the head coach of the West Indies Test team. Now, international cricket commentator Nikhil Utamchandani joins us via Zoom from South Africa. Nikhil, welcome to the Sportsmax Zone. Great to have you on the show. And um, uh, happy to hear that you're in, in, in South Africa getting ready for a major assignment. Thank you very much, Lance. And great to be here, as always, discussing West Indies cricket. Happy New Year to the entire Zone family. Yeah. All right, let's talk quickly about the... Huge challenge that faces this inexperienced West Indies team because seven uncapped players going to take on an Australian team which in the past week reclaimed the number one spot in the world test rankings seems uh, a mountain to climb. And uh, Jeffrey Dujon, the former West Indies wicketkeeper batsman, suggesting that um, he likens this to uh, sending the lambs to the slaughter. Would you go as far as to suggest um, what Jeffrey Dujon has said? Well, to be honest, Lance, I'm always very optimistic about West Indies cricket, and I'll give Cricket West Indies some credit as well. I heard what Andrew Coley said just now. Um, the fact that they've been able to organize a few tours, one to Bangladesh, one to South Africa, away from home, where the nucleus of this current test team has been, I think it will help in terms of the experience. But I watched that Pakistan versus Australia test series very closely, um, almost every single ball, really. Um, given that time difference and how well it worked out for us in the Caribbean. And boy, I can tell you, by the World Test Championship, by the rankings, by the personnel, that Australia team is, I think, could go down as one of the best that we've ever seen. And I think it's the bowling attack that has a lot to do with it. You've got Steve Smith, who's averaging over 60. And probably, luckily for the West Indies, there's no David Warner, but Kawaja, Labushin, and the list goes on and on. So I think it's going to be a, a steep mountain for the West Indies to climb. And I think for me... I look less at the results and more about an opportunity for seven uncapped players to really stake a claim and really put their name out there um, and show the world what they're capable of doing against the world's best. Yeah. Um, talk to us quickly about some of the uncapped players, though, Nikhil, because um, for decades we have accepted that here in the Caribbean our domestic structure doesn't properly prepare our players for international cricket. And Waver Hines, who was a co-host of mine at the Sports Max Zone here when we just started 10 years ago, had always said that our players have to be learning on the job at the highest level because that's where they really start to take on the level that they are asked to compete at at international standings. But you know some of these players, uh, a few of them Barbadians like Hakeem Jordan and Justin Graves and Zachary McCaskey um, and, and the, the seven uncapped men generally. Um, how talented are they? Because I don't want to write them off. We know that Australia are going to be huge favourites here, that's for sure. There's no question about that. But sport is played on the field and we've seen upsets and we've seen surprises. Um, is there enough quality in some of these players, you think, Nikhil, that, that could probably create some surprises for the Aussies? Yeah, I definitely think they have the capabilities to challenge. I think another factor going into the series I mean, cricket has become so technology-driven now where teams are able to plan 
and really able to set up for oppositions. But I think the fact that the West Indies have got so many new faces could almost work in their favour. There's almost not enough about these players to sort of uh, for other teams to plan for. However, I'll say to your point about the pitches, it is a big step up for guys like Akeem Jordan, Shamar Joseph, who's one I'll be keeping a close eye on, just to see, I think, how far uh, our fast bowling talent is from playing in the best surfaces or sort of more conducive surfaces, but also um, the, the step up or the difference in the levels. Because in the Caribbean, we've grown used to very spin-friendly pitches um, in our first-class setup and pitches on the slower side. So for someone like Joseph, who's showed at times he can get up to 145 kilometers per hour, he just took 12 wickets in two matches in seam-friendly conditions in South Africa. I think that in itself is a step in the right direction and something for West Indian fans to be excited for because when he goes to Australian conditions with green grass on pitches and some variable bounce, he could be effective and maybe cause some problems uh, for that Australian top order. Akeem Jordan, Justin Graves, both have also had success, but they are more swing bowlers. So I think they'll be relying on that new ball um, to really make an impact. And it'll be interesting to see how Alzari Joseph as the leader of that attack now, uh, fits himself into the puzzle with all these pieces around him. Yeah, and as we talk about the seven uncapped players, Nikhil, I think it's very, very important that we recognise how essential, how crucial the three senior players will be because we have Craig Brassweight, you mentioned Elzari Joseph and Kimar Roach because, of course, these youngsters and... Some of them not so young, but it's their first time playing, will be depending on the experiences of all of these players to ensure that, you know, they do the best that they can. Well, I think starting at Alzari, I mean, he has shown us so many progressive strides in all three formats um, in 2023. So I'm really excited to see, you know, with new responsibility, I think he's learned a lot more about his personal game and development. So... This will be a big challenge, but I'm sure he will be relishing it. And also, I think it's why he opted to go up to the series as well. Uh, understanding that Test cricket is really the pinnacle and, and this is a great opportunity for him. But I'll say Craig will be, I think, even more important if that's possible than he was last year. Because remember, he scored 110 uh, when the West Indies actually challenged Australia uh, in that first test. And many thought at that stage that, you know, the West Indies had a chance of winning that test match. Obviously, things became a bit difficult, but... I think just be on the basis of that, stage during China, Paul, that's where he began his test career and was very positive. Actually found benefit on the pitches there, being a bit quicker, ball coming onto the bat a bit uh, better, and he actually played his shot. So it's a great opportunity for the three of them specifically. Joshua De Silva has been around for a while, um, and it's, it's, he will obviously have new responsibilities and probably a bit more to do behind the stumps and with bat in hand. Whether he goes up the order, we'll see. But I think... All in all, for the senior and the uncapped players, this is a special opportunity. And yes, Australia are playing the cricket of their lives. However, you do well in this series, you know, the world will, will notice. The world will know because this is an Australian side who have won the Ashes. They've won the World Test Championship. And as Lance said at the beginning of the show, they're number one in the world. Yeah, I don't want to harp too much on what is not or who's missing. But how much will we miss a Jason Holder and a Kyle Mayers given the conditions? Yeah, a lot, uh, Maria, a lot in terms of the fast bowling pedigree. Um, I even think like someone like a Jermaine Blackwood, who I know has struggled in recent times, Raymond Rifa as well. But the fact that both of them were on that Australia tour a year ago, uh, it was quite surprising to me to see them not return just because of the experience of these conditions and how menacing they can be. I mean, I look at Babar Azam, who has dominated cricket in all formats for the last two to three years, and even in Australia, Every time he looked like he was getting a star and this could be his day, he'll get a big hundred. They just found a way. They threw so much at him, made him play and really challenged him. And he's one of the best in the world right now. So it just tells you how difficult of a place it is to go to. And yeah, I mean, good luck to the West Indies. And I think all in all, they'll come out as a better team and better individuals. Yeah, Nikhil, we look forward to see what will happen in that West Indies versus Australia test series. I do have one for you, though, because I see you are traveling the world and having a wonderful time at it. We could call you a limited over specialist, um, maybe even <laughs> a T20 specialist. I do wonder, though, if you want to do test cricket. Oh, Ricardo, a test cricket, as I said, is the pinnacle, you know, so... Anytime the opportunity is awarded, I would love to, to, to just yeah, be around. I think what has been cricket's greatest format, and I think it's not dead, to be honest. When I watch Test Series, South Africa, India, um, the West Indies and England always have good battles. So Test cricket is alive, and I'm ready anytime. 
Okay. Yeah, you know, Lance and Mariah and Nikhil, the difference is, um, as a commentator, the test rewards are probably better than the T20 rewards. <laughs> 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 I, I guess they are. The card <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Nikhil. What was that, Nikhil? I just said Ricardo, man. You always have me on my toes. I just can't. I mean, you're unpredictable, man. I just don't know which direction you're going to go in. <laughs> All right, Nikhil, well, we, we'll be in touch for sure. Um, uh, great linking with you as, as usual. And we'll be watching, well, first of all, this tour match very closely to see how the Windies boys uh, assert themselves on this opening assignment. Yeah, looking forward to seeing you on Sports Max, guys. Thanks. Okay, great. Okay, just a quick look at some of the uh, stats for some of these uh, on cap players. Their first class stats, of course. Um, uh, the seven on cap players in Australia at the moment getting ready for action in this series. Uh, Zachary McCaskey, 27 uh, year old top order batter, 11 first class matches, 641 runs, averaging 30.52. No hundred so far in his career. Plays for Wildeen Barbados. Tevin Imlak, the Guyanese, also 27 wicketkeeper batsman, 17 first class matches, 612 runs, 24.48. He has had 100. So we see here as we go through them a lot of um, lack of experience in the number of first class matches they've, they've played, even uh, coming into test cricket for the first time. Justin Graves, a little older than the other two, seam bowling all rounder. He has 37 first class matches, 1,268 runs, averaging 26.97, and he has had 100 as well. 76 wickets, averaging 22.76. He has had four or five wicket hauls. He is, of course, from Barbados. Kamim Hodge, the Dominique, and I can't believe he's 30 years old already. He was, he was a junior just a, a few years ago. I guess I'm the one that's getting old. Time batting waits on no man. And <laughs> left arm spinner, first class record, um, 55 matches. In fact, 2,762 runs. He averages 29.07. He has had 400s in first class cricket. He's taken 55 wickets, average 37.80. He has had one five wicket haul. These are the uncapped players on the tour. Kevin Sinclair, the 24-year-old Guyanese off-spinner and uh, all-rounder. 21 matches in first-class cricket so far. Just under 1,000 runs, averaging 31.48. No hundreds yet. Uh, 66 wickets, averaging 24.33. And he's had five four-wicket hauls. as a young player I have a lot of time for. Ghana producing a lot of good young cricketers recently. Akeem Jordan has been around for a while um, with the CCC in domestic cricket as well fast bowler 15 matches 30 59 wickets averaging 22.08 he has had uh, two five wicket holes so far in his career one of the seven on cap players in the West Indies squad Shamar Joseph the exciting Ghanese who has a lot of pace 24 years old only five first class matches and getting ready to play test cricket 21 wickets averaging 21.80 he has had a couple of five wicket holes already in his career so um, the stats on some of these players based on their experience playing first class cricket not a lot to go on but let's see how they handle themselves here in this australia opportunity because uh, they're taking on the best in the world and they've got a tough job to do zone update two coming up after this back in a moment